Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. So on a recent episode, we spoke about different lighting technologies, including compact fluorescent, high pressure sodium, and light emitting diode. With resounding feedback, today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into compact fluorescent and fluorescent grow lights. Compact fluorescent and fluorescent light bulbs work on the same general principle. Electrons excite mercury atoms emanating UV light. That UV light is then converted to visible light when it hits the fluorescent coating. All that compact fluorescents are is a miniaturized version of fluorescent lights. This miniaturized version was able to replace almost worldwide incandescent light bulbs. The benefit of fluorescent and compact fluorescent light bulbs is they're able to emit wavelengths of light that are perfect for photosynthesis, allowing us to effectively grow indoors. For more information on the wavelengths you need to grow and units of measurement for lighting technologies such as Kelvin, Watts, and Lumens, I'll put a link in the description below and at the end of this video. So let's talk about using these lights to get an early start on your summer crops or grow all year round indoors. So the first thing you'll need is a grow room. You need space and access to electricity. Now spa the space itself is extremely important. Generally you want a low humidity area that stays about 21 degrees Celsius or 70 Fahrenheit. If the soil temperature is too cool, you're going to invite fungus and insect issues. Now, in my basement, what I do is I've raised my plants off the ground, which effectively helps with both the humidity and soil temperature. This temperature will greatly improve your germination rates. If the soil's too cold, germination will suffer. When selecting either fluorescent tubes or compact fluorescent light bulbs, you'll want to think about the plants you want to grow. If you're looking for leafy greens and herbs, you can probably get away with a low watt fluorescent ballast. If you want to grow things like tomatoes and peppers indoors and have them produce, you're probably going to want to go with a higher watt option of either a CFL or a fluorescent light fixture. When selecting a light for growing, you want to make sure you have the best possible Kelvin rating. The Kelvin rating is the closest analog to the actual wavelengths of light that the light is emitting. What you want to aim for is 6500 and 2100 Kelvin. So a common question that I do get is for the fluorescent tube lights, what is the difference between a T5 and a T8? There are two main differences. A T8 bulb is physically larger in diameter than a T5, but the T5 is usually about two times more efficient at getting usable light when comparing the exact same wattage than a T8 to the plant itself. So one of the limitations I find with CFL bulbs is their physical square area growing space. Because of their compact nature, they do produce more usable light at a higher intensity on the plant, but generally this is limited to a short or small area. Now fluorescent and compact fluorescent bulbs lose energy or usable energy the further they are away from the plant at an exponential rate. So in, with that in mind, you really need to have the compact fluorescent right over top or in close proximity to the plant itself. Keeping your plants in close proximity to light will help increase the efficiency of the effect of light reaching the plants for photosynthesis. Now don't worry, compact fluorescent and fluorescent bulbs do not emit a whole lot of heat, so you can keep them the recommended two to three centimeters away from the plant or one inch. With this in mind, CFL commonly come in higher wattage equivalents, allowing you to grow higher energy demanding crops such as tomatoes and peppers. Fluorescent lights give you a long area to grow in and distribute their effective energy fairly consistently over the growing area. This makes them ideal for growing plants that are all the same height or for starting your seedlings indoors in the spring. Often these ballasts come in arrangements of two to six parallel bulbs. Although the light efficiency decays over the distance, when you have the overlap, it's cumulative, allowing you to effectively add up to sufficient light to grow plants in the spaces between the bulbs themselves. Surrounding your plants with reflective or white surfaces will help improve the amount of light hitting your target plants. These light fixtures are generally available in most home improvement stores. One of the drawbacks though is they don't commonly come in high watt equivalents. Even with the lower watt fluorescent tubes, I've been able to grow both cherry tomatoes and hot peppers to harvest. 
The only noticeable difference to their outdoor companions or higher output lighting fixtures is the amount of production. Where I can collect between 40 to 50 cherry tomatoes indoors, I can usually collect about 300 on the same plant outdoors. A common question I get is with a certain bulb of a certain wattage, how much square area of growing can I get? This isn't as simple as one would think. Wattage doesn't necessarily equate to a square area of growth, rather it's the amount of usable energy being emitted from the light itself. So although the intensity in the center can be higher, that square area growth can be no different. So what I recommend is placing the higher energy requiring plants like tomatoes or peppers directly underneath the light. And with lower energy requiring plants such as herbs or leafy greens, you can try this out. A little bit of experimentation will let you know the effective range of your lights or the overlap in ranges. So what you can do is you can actually take that plant and place it a certain distance from the light. If you notice a leaning but it's still growing, you can continue to grow there as long as the plant looks healthy by simply turning the plant a couple of times a week. This will help it from leaning too far to one side, but if it's still growing, you know you have enough effective energy. Now if you don't notice growth, whereas the other equivalents are getting growth, this may mean that there's just not enough effective light hitting the plant, meaning you're outside of that square area of growing. Fluorescent lights lose some of their effective energy for growth the longer they run. The highest loss is usually during the initial use of this. Some sources indicate that you should be replacing your CFL bulbs every year for effective growth. In my case, I've used the same bulbs, 12 hours on, 12 hours off, for the last three indoor growing seasons and have had no significant drop in production. Now it's time to start planting. Simply place the seeds in moist soil. Be careful to water slowly in order to avoid disturbing the seeds as they germinate. This is the only time that I'll water from the top of the pot. I do this in order to avoid letting the seedlings dry out while small. Once more established, I will bottom water only to allow for healthy root development and help prevent pest issues. Studies have shown the presence of light helps increase germination rates of seeds. So from the very beginning, I'll place lights at the recommended two to three centimeters or one inch above the soil. In comparison to other grow light technology, running a fluorescent grow system both has a lower investment cost and running cost, and you can enjoy fairly similar results. Thank you for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.